Welcome back to my channel and for today's video I have some great news and it is I'm in South Korea. For this video I will be sharing the process of me coming here including the requirements, airport and immigration processes, getting an RT-PCR upon arrival in Korea, getting a SIM card and using the airport bus from Incheon to Seoul. Please take note that I am Filipino and I came from the Philippines. So if you're coming from another country, the requirements and processes might not be the same. But you can still watch the remaining parts and processes upon arrival in Korea, such as getting an RT-PCR, um, queue code. So again, if you're not Filipino, please skip to part 3 of this video. Part 1, Travel Requirements for Filipinos. So here's the list of requirements you need in order for you to travel from the Philippines to South Korea. And let me explain each one. First of all, of course, you need your passport. So it goes without saying that your passport should be valid for six months beyond your travel date. If your passport is about to expire or you don't have a passport yet, better make an appointment with the DFA already since it could be very difficult to set an appointment with the DFA to get your passport. Number two, valid Korean visa. So the requirements for getting a Korean visa may differ on your current occupation. So whether you're a student or employed or self-employed, you have to check out the website of the Embassy of Korea so that you can check the list of requirements depending on your occupation. So for my visa, I'm currently holding a multiple one, which is valid for five years. So when they lifted, the travel by last June 2022, I didn't need to apply for a visa again since I already have one. Number three, flight itinerary. Of course, you have to have your flight details with you and I personally think that it's best to book your tickets at least a month before your flight or a few months before your flight because nowadays I think due to the human trafficking crime, immigration might flag a person for booking a flight on the same day or the day before. Of course, this is not always the case, but it's better to be safe. Number four, travel insurance with COVID. So I was told that it is required and it is very important for immigration that you have your travel insurance which covers COVID related things. So in my case, I got travel insurance from Cebu Pacific, which is my airline, and their insurance partner, which is Chubb, wherein I paid roughly 1,500 um, Philippine pesos to get COVID coverage um, on top of the usual travel coverage. And I think it is fair because you never know what might happen and it's very difficult to be in a situation, in a medical situation when you're not in your home country. So yeah. Number four, accommodation. So of course you have to show where you're staying and a lot of tra travel documents will ask for the name of your place, exact address, as well as contact number. So get those prepared. Number six, vaccine. South Korea will not accept our local vaccination cards from our LGU. So you can get your vaccination card from vaxer.dh.com. However, take note that South Korea has already lifted the requirement of um, vaccination and all travelers, regardless of vaccination status, can already travel within South Korea. But in any case, I still got mine printed and read. Number seven, negative PCR test issued within 48 hours before your flight or a negative rapid antigen test issued within 24 hours before your flight. So a lot of accredited hospitals and clinics in the Philippines already offer RT-PCR tests as well as rapid antigen tests so you can get that anywhere. And for myself, I decided to take the rapid antigen test considering that I will be also paying for an RT-PCR test upon arrival in South Korea. So uh, it's a cheaper option 
and um, for mine, I got mine done in Kaiser Medical in Makati and it was for 617 pesos. Number 8, QCO. After you get your negative COVID test result, you should go to the website called Okay, I'll just link it down below. And fill out your details such as passport details, flight itinerary, accommodation, and as well as you have to attach your negative test result. After that, you will be given a QR code and you have to save that QR code on your phone or just print it out um, because it will be very handy when you get to Korea. You can actually fill out your Q code upon arrival in Korea, but that will take longer. I suggest that you do it prior to your flight. Alright, part two. So, we are going to talk about the airport and immigration process in the food. So, as usual, for international flights, you have to be at the airport at least four hours before your flight so you can check in, especially if you have luggages. make an important note that if you're like me and you have two passports one which is your new passport and another one which holds which is an old and expired passport but holds a valid visa please go to the airport very early or earlier than usual because in a usual flight right check-in is very fast like they go check your documents, your passport, check in your luggage, and then they give you your boarding pass. But for my case, it took me a couple of minutes, like 30 minutes, just to get my passports realigned. And what they mean by realigning them is that they have to check with the Korean government or the Korean airport. I'm not sure, but it's in Korea. Just in short, they have to verify your old passport with your new passport and it will, it will take a couple of minutes when you get to the airline and just submit your passport and negative covid test result that's it they will give you your boarding pass number two immigration personally i was very scared to go through immigration this time because it's the first time that i'm flying after two years so um this is my sixth time actually coming here to korea but this is the most nerve-wracking for me since I've been hearing a lot of offloading stories on TikTok and that uh, they weren't able to go to their destination because of immigration. At the same time, it's my first time flying as a business owner instead of uh, a student or an employee. So um, I was pretty scared. The questions that they asked me were, first, where am I going? Second, until when am I staying there? They asked me if I'm going alone or if I'm going with friends. And then um, she asked me if I was a K-pop fan because she checked my passport and saw that I've been here a couple of times already. So yeah, and then lastly, she asked me what my business was since um, on the immigration card, I included there that I'm a business owner. That's it. They didn't ask for any document, but take note that I came prepared. I printed out my DTI registration properties under my name because I was so scared of getting or being offloaded. And I urge you to do the same because you'll never know what the immigration officer will ask of you. Immigration, especially in the Philippines, is very strict, especially with the human trafficking crime. So they are very strict. So make sure that you prepare all your documents as well as make sure that your answers are solid and your answers check with your documents. For example, if you're an employee, make sure to bring your employee card, leave of absence, approval, anything that will connect you to your job and that will connect you to the Philippines like they know that you will return for business owners uh, bring your DTI registration mayor's permit ITR other usual questions that you get asked of they will ask you for your accommodation when you will be returning how many days 
you're staying there, who are you going with, is it family or friends, what will you do there, they might ask you for your itinerary. After I get through immigration, there was a line going to the final baggage check. I got interrogated for the second time, like while in line, there will be two officers there checking your passport and your visa and asking a series of questions again. So for me, they asked again where I was going and why I have two passports and how many times have I been to Korea and even asked me if I really speak Korean. Part 3. RT-PCR on arrival in Korea. It is a requirement that you get a negative RT-PCR certificate within 24 hours upon arrival in South Korea. And before, you can get it anywhere, but now they require you to get your RT-PCR test done in Incheon Airport upon arrival. Incheon Airport has four testing centers and are just a walkable distance from the arrival gates. The test is 80,000 won or approximately 3,500 pesos or 60 US dollars. For myself, I chose to do it in the East Wing testing center since that was near my arrival gate as well as the bus I would be riding to Seoul. Please get a reservation online to make it easier for you since upon arriving there at the testing center, you will see two lines. One line is for those people who did not get any reservation done. And then the second line is for those who have reservations and the second line will be much faster. Make sure to get your reservations prior to your flight. You cannot make a reservation on the same day of your arrival. So make sure to do it. I think you can do it at least seven days before your flight. And the website you can reserve your appointment at is safetogopass.com. So everything you need to know is right there. For the RTPCR, there will be four steps. First of all, someone will assist you register or check your registration using a computer and they will ask you to verify your details such as your name, email address, address of the place you're staying at, and your phone number in Korea if any. Number two, you will make your payment. It's 80,000 Korean won or 3,500 pesos or $60. Third, you get your RT-PCR. They just swabbed one nostril and it took like three seconds. Fourth, you have to wait for your test report to be sent to your email, so make sure that your the email that you provide them is correct. I did my test around 7.45 in the evening. I got my result three hours after, which is at 10.45. Consecutive. Number four, getting a SIM card. This part is not really mandatory, but I think it's best to get a SIM card if you're staying in Korea for a long time. So if, let's say, you're staying for about two weeks or more, I suggest that you get a SIM card instead of a router, it would be more convenient for you. I got mine from Klook because they give discounts. So um, they have 5 days, 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, and 30 days available. And after the 30th day, you can still choose to extend your data or your plan through a website. So what I did is I booked from Klook, I printed that, and after I get out of the arrival gates, there will be a counter for KT. Um, my SIM card is KT and it's very easy to find since it's already provided in the voucher and they will give you your SIM card and they will ask you to try it first nearby so that in case it doesn't work you can go back to them and they can help you out or replace the SIM card so very easy part 5 airport bus from Incheon Airport so, so we all know that there are a lot of ways to get from Incheon Airport to Seoul. So there is the train, there are taxis, and there are buses. And personally, I think trains are useful for people who have little to no luggage. And then taxis are very convenient, but they can be very expensive. Every time I go here to Korea, I use the airport bus since it's very convenient. It's cheap, but it's very convenient. So if you brought two or more luggages like I did, I would suggest taking the airport bus to your destination. Just do your research. You can check out the airport bus in the Korean airport website. Check which airport bus stop your accommodation is nearby because a lot of bus stops are actually located in front of hotels. However, please take note that unlike before pandemic when buses from Incheon to Seoul run every say 10 to 15 minutes, um, now they only have 
specific time as to when the bus is arriving. For my bus, which for privacy purposes I will not disclose, there were only there are only three time slots. So one in the morning, one in, one in the afternoon, and one in the evening. So I was very lucky since my flight arrived just before the last time time slot. So again, make sure to check the airport bus website for details. As for the payment, there will be a ticket booth. So just see where you're going, what time, and pay ahead. So payment differs on the location. So for Seoul, it could be between 15,000 won to 18,000 won. So that's it for this video. I hope you find this very helpful and I hope you have a fruitful trip to South Korea if ever you're coming here. And I have a lot of vlogs coming up. But if you have any requests, any questions, please feel free to comment it down below and let me know what you think. And thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.